I can say with confidence that 9 out of 10 Cubase users, actually maybe more, have never ever used the feature that I'm about to show you. And this might be one of the most powerful features in Cubase that not only it will save you tons of time, but it immediately transforms you into a pro. So let's talk about this right after this. So like I said, most Cubase users that I've ever known in my life have never ever used this feature that I'm about to show you and they don't even know what it is. And some of the users know what it is and they're really scared to use it. They have no idea what it does. And this feature is the logical editor. Now, before you stop watching this video, give it a chance. I'm pretty sure that you will find quite a few things that are really useful. So I'm going to show you five of my favorite logical editor commands that I'm using all the time and they've saved me so much time over the years. First of all, let's open logical editor. If you want to find logical editor, you go project and then you go project logical editor. There we go. And it's this window. Quite a few people are intimidated. They have no idea what this window is. Now, if you want to get started with Logical Editor, I would suggest that you use some of the nice presets that we have here. They have some examples, we have naming schemes, we have um, different ways to delete events according to specific conditions and everything. But today I'm going to show you my own personal project Logical Editor commands that when I go into a studio and I work on a client's project, it really makes a big difference in terms of time, but it also makes a big difference on how you look in front of a customer if you happen to work with somebody side by side. So my first favorite command, as you can see, I have a separate folder here for my own personal commands, is color coding my tracks very, very easily. Now, let's take a look at this project here, right? Honestly, this thing gives me a headache just by looking at it. Everything is gray. I have no idea where to start. I don't know where the drums are. And this is a relatively small project. You know, if you're working with bigger projects with 100 tracks, 150 tracks, then things can get more complicated. But for this example, this will do. So let's say I received this project from a client. Maybe I want to figure out where everything is. But most of the times, if you're working on your own material or if you're working with somebody that knows what they're doing, most of the times you will have the names of the tracks like kick, bass, uh, claps, hi-hats, guitars, and so on and so forth. Now, every single time that I start mixing or producing a track, or maybe when I am doing additional production in a track, what I always, always do is color code my channels. And this can be a really time consuming procedure, okay? I would go here and go, okay, kick drum, I want to paint my kick drum red, and my bass, I want to paint it blue, and so on and so forth. Now, this is very time consuming and it's what most people do. So let's see how quickly I can color code this project with just a few clicks. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's go. Dom Segalas, color drums red. Boom. Color bass blue. Boom. Color guitars green. Boom. Color synths purple. Boom. Color vocals orange. Boom. Color buses. Boom. Color effects channels. Boom. I'm done. Boom. How long did that take me? Can you imagine if I was trying to do this one by one? It would take me quite a long time. And this is a small project. This only has 27 channels. If I was working on a 150 channel project, this would take a long, long, long time. So let's dissect this project logical editor command. Okay. For the drums, for example, this is color drums red. Let's see what I've used there. As you can see, you have some commands here and then you have the actions here. First, we have the filters. So what do I have here? I have container type is equal to track. That means that my command is going to affect the tracks. What about this one? The name contains drums, okay? Now this could be is equal to drums or contains not drums. In this case, I want to affect names that have these specific keywords. 
I'm going to go name contains drums or name contains kick or name contains snare or hat, clap, tom, crash, ride, cymbal, top, percussion. So I have to create this command once. If I want to add another one, let's say I want to add here another command and let's say name contains splash, okay, splash symbol. I can add this and then I can say or and there we go. This is the first bit. The next bit is what will happen with all these things that we just selected. The target is set color to set to fix value, okay, and then I just select the color. Then I can hit apply and we're good. Now, once you've set all this up, that takes, I don't know, this takes a few minutes. You save it as a preset here and then you can use it again and again and again. I wanted to show you what's the philosophy behind the logical editor, but there's so much you can do with it. That's my first use for it. It's color coding my tracks super, super fast. Of course, your tracks need to have names that make sense. So you have name audio one, audio two, audio three, you're doomed. There's nothing you can do about it. It's as simple as that. But most of the times, if you're producing your own music or if you have a song from a client for mixing, usually they have named the tracks in a way that it makes sense. Now, if they have named the tracks, I don't know, Groove Agent 1, Groove Agent 2, just add Groove Agent to one of these conditions there and you're good to go. Let's move on to my second favorite command for the Project Logical Editor that I use all the time. And that's adding buses. And with the Project Logical Editor, you can add buses to your channels as easily as color coding them, like I showed you right now. And how? Let me show you the command that I use. So here's the command that I've set up. It's called drums to group and folder. So what this command will do is it will find all my drums in the project and put them inside a folder and create a bus for them. Let me show you. So I haven't selected anything as you can see. And here's the command. Okay, I'm going to show you very quickly if you want to replicate it. So container tribe is equal to track. So I'm going to affect my tracks. And here I have all the actual tracks that I'm going to do. The function is select them first and then add my macro, which I've shown you in one of my previous videos. Select tracks in new folder and add group channel. Let's check it out. Apply. Check out what happens to these drums here. Oops, I have a dialog there. Okay, I'm creating a bus for my drums. Drums. Done. Done. And you know what? Just to top it off, I'm going to go and recolor my group channels. And now my drums are also gray, so I know that my group channels are gray. And now let's listen. I don't know what and just if by magic, all my drums are put inside a folder, they are rooted to a drum bus, and I don't have to lift a finger. Let's check it out again. Go again. One click. Check it out. Boom. The only thing I have to do is type the name of the bus, and that's it. And, you know, they could be completely scattered. They could be up and down. You know, my snare could be at the bottom of the project and completely scattered. It doesn't matter. You do it like this super, super easily. Now, in this case, I'm using a macro here. This is a selected tracks to new folder and add group channel. Watch one of my previous videos about this and you will know how to do it. I'm going to try and link it right here. Let's go to the third command that I use all the time. So let's say that I want to do some really intense drum editing or some really intense vocal editing. I always like to be focused on the element that I'm editing rather than having a whole project and it kind of distracts me. So let's say that in this case, I want to edit those drums, move things around, chop, chop, chop and all these things and I want to focus on the drums. Here's the command that I use. Show only drums. I click on this and then again, let's go through the command. Container type is equal to track and name contains not kick. Name contains not snare. Name contains not hat. And this is all with end instead of or that we used before, right? Because we want all these conditions to be met. And, 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 top, crash, symbol, ride, and then I go to the target, okay, and then I say 
track operation, there you go, high track, and toggle. Let's check it out. What happens when I hit apply? Oh, boom! I have just my drums right there and I can start focusing on this right now. Now this command has hidden the drums, but that's why here, instead of having enable or disable, I have toggle. So if I click apply again, everything is back. How cool is that? Apply, just drums. Apply, no drums. Apply, just drums. Apply, back to project. Apply, just drums. Apply, back to project. Now if I do exactly the same thing, and here I have all the conditions for the vocals, for example, I can do the same thing for vocals, I can do the same thing for guitars, I can do the same thing for synths, I can do pretty much anything I want. The only thing I need to do is set up a project logical editor command for this. Let me show you the next command. So that's command number four. And this is muting. I can mute all drums, I can mute all vocals. Basically, it goes the same thing for every element of a production. For example, let's say I am at the end of a project and I want to create an instrumental or maybe I want to listen to how the song sounds without the vocals. Yeah, most of the times you will have them in a bus and then you can mute them, but sometimes you might have some vocal elements outside this bus or you might have some background vocals and you want to make sure that they're absolutely muted. Let's check it out. I go here and I say mute all, let's go all drums in this case. See, I have exactly the same names and try and be as generic as possible. So maybe for this one, I would actually make it symbol instead of symbols, because I want the command to be triggered by symbol and not symbols. So if I have symbol, it's still gonna be triggered. Now let's see what happens once I do this. Let's play the track. And then again, if I go toggle, So, very, very easily, I can mute a bunch of tracks, no matter where they are. See, I can just move these guys down here. Doesn't matter. It will still mute them. And this I use all the time when I want to check out how a song sounds without maybe synths, without maybe my vocals. It gives you a fresh perspective. Okay, and you can identify problems. And everything that I show you is completely, completely customizable. So you can take the initial idea and turn it into something of your own. Let's move on to the last command that I'm going to show you today. And this is the insert bypass. Let's go to my library and go to insert bypass toggle. Now, what's gonna happen? Now, this is a little bit more smart than going here, okay? In order to deactivate all your inserts, you can go here into the mixer and click on this, okay? And this will deactivate all the inserts. But the downside of this is that this will even deactivate the inserts for your FX channels. So if a vocal goes to a reverb, then this insert will be deactivated on the FX channel and that will make the vocal sound louder because it's going to be driven to this FX channel but there's no reverb anymore, so you're going to get twice the sound, if that makes sense. But with this command, what I'm doing is I'm only deactivating the inserts on the channels and not the effect channels. So let's see what it actually does. So as you can see, all the inserts for the channels are getting deactivated. But if I have an effects channel like here, see, I have my DVR-250 reverb and my TC-2290 delay, these don't get deactivated, which is, in my case, what I want. I don't want to have the vocal going through these channels and confusing me. I want to hear how everything else sounds without the insert effects. So this is something that you can't do by using this button here. So let's dissect this very simple command here. So container type is equal to track. We know this by now. And media type is unequal to effect. And, see, and. So the effects are not going to be affected by this. And what is the action? Well, for that track, bypass the inserts. And how? 
enable disable toggle so I can go back and forth like this how cool is that so listen this is just five of my favorite commands but I'm using the project logical editor all the time and it saves me so much time and the great thing with the project logical editor is you can be very very creative with it you can start creating commands that are super complex and literally it would take you hours to do something that the project logical editor can do with just one single click of this apply button here so i would say start out really slowly take it easy check out what the examples do Check out what I did on this, you know, feel free to pause the video and see what kind of commands I have there and how I build them. And then when you're confident, go to the initial preset and start adding your own commands. So the way I do it is I go plus, I go media type is audio. Okay, let's say media type equals audio channels. And the action is, for example, a very simple action is select. Okay. And when you do this, you know, this is a super simple command, but you know, I think this way you will understand how it works. If I click apply, see, it selects just the audio channels. If I go and change this to MIDI, it will select just the MIDI channels. And then I can even add another action here and I can choose function, transform, position, move to cursor. And it does it, you know? You can be very creative with these things. These things can help you a lot with editing. They can help you a lot with organizing a project, with figuring out where things are. It's a lifesaver. And honestly, guys, I would really love if this video inspires you to use it because this is one of the things that Cubase has. And I really, really want to stress this out. I haven't seen any other DAW having this much control with a tool like this, like the Project Logical Editor in Cubase. So it's a really power user tool, but once you learn how to use it and how to create your own presets, you'll be flying, I guarantee that. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. In the comments down below, let me know. Did you know about the Project Logical Editor? Were you using this or was this the first time you came across it? And let me know if you have a cool command in the Project Logical Editor that I should know. I would be very interested in that. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. It really, really, really helps. And don't be shy to share this video. Let's spread the Cubase love. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.